In this video, we'll cover CIG's progress throughout the end of the year of 2023 in preparation for this year. Let's get straight into it. Under AI content, the AI content focused on bug fixing to enhance social AI at the end of the year. After achieving a more robust state, they plan to integrate various features and behaviors from Squad 42. During this period, the team revived the civilian behavior, addressing issues with basic AI usables like chairs and seats across different locations. They also updated voice packs and basic behaviors for hawkers, vendors, admins, bartender AI, and ensuring proper voice assignments and improved animation for NPC usables. Additionally, security AI bugs in the Lorville Transit area were identified and fixed, incorporating Squad 42 security behaviors. I can't wait to see this actually. Collaboration with Level Design led to the implementation of Squad 42's engineer and security behavior in different areas with limited functionality. As they add these things into the PU, we're going to see a different environment in the live servers. I cannot wait. It's going to be a different feel. It should feel more real like, but uh, we'll have to see once we get it. On the AI features, it says as of the Alpha 3.22 release, the AI feature team addressed issues affecting improved combat behavior, particularly slow reacting AI during missions. The challenges in pinpointing the root causes and often involves complex debugging testing were acknowledged. To streamline this process, the team implemented three stages. The first one being improved knowledge of AI debugging tools especially among the QA team to provide comprehensive information when issues arise, potentially avoiding unnecessary debugging for specific mission or location setups. Number two is expedited location reproduction by introducing teleport functionality to active mission locations, reducing the time spent flying to specific spots during investigation. And number three, they enhance debugging tools to highlight identified causes for easy recognition and subsequent occurrences. For Alpha 3.22, the AI feature team tackled slow reacting AI by fixing issues such as AI perception meters, discrepancies, problems with existing and investigate behavior correctly, and challenges in the hostility and perception system. The latter requires a better design specification plans and improved to hostility systems. Ongoing investigation aimed to identify additional slow reacting AI issues for future releases while maintaining combat functionality. As they continue to implement rep layer and server meshing, I really hope to see these translate over into the PU. As of late, the MPC AI have not been challenging unless you find yourself in a 30 FPS server. The team also worked on AI issues associated with replication layer, a core component of server meshing. Problems were identified in serialized process leading to incorrect restoration of observable AI states after migration or server crashes. The fix involves making switches between states more consistent and tied closely to the status component controlling the transition. Under AI Tech, it says here at the end of the year, the AI Tech team made progress in enhancing features and providing support to release builds. These development includes advancement in void functionality, approaching finalization for placing fishes, rodents, and birds in environments. This is going to be exciting to see. Finally, we're going to be seeing fauna in the PU. Very exciting. Updates involve rules and avoiding danger, detecting weapon usage, transitioning from idle to fleeing, iterations on killing board agents, and refining transition from animation to ragdoll were also implemented. Birds receive extended wandering states such as walking after landing. Server clan synchronization for birds is currently under development. They've been polishing existing features included improved collision avoidance for NPCs using trolleys achieved through updates to paid controller logic. New functionality for NPCs using ladder allowing checking availability and waiting for the ladder to be used in the opposite direction. On the ship AI front, spleen functionality was improved, enable ships to move along spleens while staying oriented towards target. Progress was made generating navigation meshes on planets addressing speed and pole related issues affecting outpost locations and NPCs. Further updates on this solutions are expected in future reports. Under animation, it says animation spent time bringing creatures to the verse, starting with four-legged predators, a bird, and fish. 
They also continue to work on facial animation for increased line count and fidelity. It's going to be exciting. Under art characters, it says in November and December, character art completed the legendary duster outfit and racing flight suit helmet. They continue working on racing flight suits itself and prepared an outfit for subscriber flair. Alongside this, research and development was done for creatures. The character concept art team started on exploration phase on features for character customizer for other creatures. Under ship art, towards the end of the year, the RSI Polaris very exciting advance from white box to gray box phase. Man, I'm really excited for this one. Focusing on the surface modeling and animation with an emphasis on modular interior design to improve reusability and scalability. This would allow them to actually um, knock out the um, the Galaxy, the RSI Galaxy right after the Polaris releases. So it's going to be really exciting to see. It says the Age of Saber Raven underwent work for Gold Standard Pass involving a component pass and dashboard polish. Three new variants were in progress. One entered production, another advanced through Graybox, and the last moved into LOD Zero. Under economy, it says in November and December, the economy team completed price balance for armor and vehicle and initiated a review of FPS weapon prices as part of a broader effort to balance the overall game economy. They introduced contextual inventory inheritance designed to tag items in shops for easier price rebalancing. The team addressed economic aspects of freight elevators, focusing on balancing the time and cost associated with their usage. Actions were taken regarding UEC income to prevent exploits, and the team worked on rebalancing mission rewards. They also investigated and addressed exploits related to ship claims and prices during this period. Under features for Arena Commander, it says throughout November and December, the feature team focused on finalizing essential refactor and polish tasks before transitioning to a more role supporting persistent universe. They also contributed to a special event and Alpha 3.22 release. Engineering completed the Kill Collector experimental mode for Alpha 3.22, introducing a system that allows developers to replace collection items based on game mode and active events. They worked on special events and reward system, incorporating a prerequisite requirement for exclusive rewards, unique loading screens, backgrounds, and a banner for event visibility were added. Experimentation began with an in-game FPS loadout customizer on the new spawn screen. Successful initial tests was conducted for enabling streaming in Arena Commander, aiming to improve performance and the ability to use the persistent universe location without limitation. Design supported Kill Collector, Dual Showdown, and other game modes for Alpha 3.22 and beyond, implementing quality of life updates and planning for the future. Level designers completed three new racetracks for a new game mode with an additional track around Pyro Jump Point and testing Master Modes. Classic Race in Alpha 3.22, a prototype game mode underwent a successful playtest and the team developed a new Grab Lev Racing mode debuted at DreamHack Atlanta. Under Feature Missions, it says in November the feature team initiated the implementation of a deadline system for certain missions across the verse to, pre to prevent indefinite delays when players are not engaging. This addressed issues like mission locking and narrative incongruities. However, it is not universally applied and each mission deadline is individually considered. Work on polishing the steal and recover mission continued. The creation of variants in progress and the new player experience received additional and new elements added to introducing important in-game systems. Cleanup and polish efforts targeted existing infiltrate and defend missions. A counter mission using modular mission accompanied the release of Data Heist. Jumptown underwent changes to the combat engagement and efforts began to make each location feel unique. In December, mission and feature prototype a time trial foot race utilizing Ledge Grab V2 feature. Oh, this is going to be interesting. The team also started converting missions to use the freight elevators, assessing missions like Blockade Runner and Xeno Threat to align with the upcoming new feature. Under VFX and Planet Tech, it says at the close of 2023, the graphics team made progress in the long term tasks. The improvement of gas cloud visual quality continued, inc incorporating a directional closing effect. 
the gas cloud system output in being unified with the planetary cloud system for the upcoming cloud upscaling solution. The global illumination team introduced transparency support via a voxel grid of low resolution probes and zone space grid of higher resolution probes. Work on material representation in ray tracing system also advanced. The Vulcan development is in its final stages for focus on reducing stutter through shade PSO compilation cache and overall performance polish before the initial release. The Planet Tech team finalized the water feature, emphasizing robustness, memory usage, and performance. Graphic enhancements were made to water edge effects against the environment and visor camera lens. VFX programming addressed fire hazard visuals, explored network support for fire hazard system, and added water VFX support. On the tool side, unique IDs for each particle effects are being implemented for better referencing and effects organization. So those were the key items CIG worked on in Q4 2023. This will be an exciting year for Star Citizen. Let me know what you look forward to the most in this year. My organization Phase 1 Industries is now recruiting new and veteran players. If you are interested, you can find our Discord in the description down below. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.